Hello, and welcome to Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Jean Marie. And I'm Ron. Collectively, we are the hosts of Podcast DX. The podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. Today we have a pleasant surprise. Gina, with whom we had uh, an earlier discussion or an earlier show several months ago, and she was here last time to discuss her liver transplant from North Carolina, and today she's here to talk about her next big surgical procedure. Welcome back, Gina. Hey guys, how you doing? (laughs) <laughs> so you're going in for the whole bionic woman look now? Yes, I am. Actually, I am getting a hip replacement. I've been needing one since 2016 when I first got diagnosed. But unfortunately, I had to wait until I had a liver transplant. So now I'm waiting for this hip replacement that should take place soon. Is it typical liver transplant than hip transplant? Nope, not just only for me. Ah, okay. <laughs> so are you getting both knees and Hips? I am. I actually have to get my right hip done first because that's the worst. And then from there, we'll see what goes next. But I do need all, I need two knees, two hips. Wow. I'm sure it would be difficult traveling with you going through the airport. I think you'd be setting off all the metal, me, uh, metal detectors. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But I'm hoping to set off a lot more than just the metal detectors. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Well, you just got cleared for surgery again. The first one had to be postponed due to a complication from the liver transplant. I bet you're anxious. I can't wait. I I feel great with the liver transplant. However, I am not mobile because of this hip and the pain that goes along with it. Well, it's you said it's been about two years that you've been dealing with this problem. And uh, it's been about nine months since your liver transplant, and you've been healing up from that and waiting for your first tip. Um, has, have there been any changes to your everyday schedule? Well, I, um, I'm limited to walking. I, if, if I get out of bed and go to the bathroom, I consider that a huge success. Sure. I, I can still I drive here and there, but I, for the most part, I go out once a week, mm-hmm. and that's usually to the hospital to get blood work. Okay. Come it's home. Big outing. Yeah, right. Yeah. I come home and uh, I'm on the chair or the couch pretty much the rest of the week. Okay. That's not, yeah, that sounds rough. Yes, it is. Right. They put the uh, the per- they put the first surgery off. You, and when you say first surgery, you mean the hip, hip replacement. Gotcha. Right, okay. right. They put that hip surgery off because of the CMV, right? Yes. Uh, CMV is a virus that's very common. And most people have had it at one time or another. But with the anti-rejection drugs that you're on because of the liver transplant, you react differently when the virus hits, and it can actually be life-threatening. So they were being careful. And initially, before your liver transplant, you were CMV negative, but you were transplanted with the liver from a CMV positive donor. And that hit you pretty hard with the virus. And... They want your first hip surgery to go really well, and they had to postpone it to get that infection under control. That must be devastating to hear. And actually, I heard about a case where several organs were transplanted from a patient who had rabies, and they didn't know at the time, and all of the transplant recipients... Turn Ended off her mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my sorry. Oh, it's very oh. rare. Would you, Jean? Very, very rare. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Lord. We're going to be kicked off the air. <laughs> but how was your pain and such um, while oh, waiting? Um, the pain is increasing every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more I do, uh, I find it very challenging. My muscles get tight. Um, my hip is burning. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's slipping in and out of the socket. I shower literally once a week. Um, it's, I find it hard to get my leg over the tub. Stairs are insane. Can't go down on my bad leg, I, which I do need 
both knees replaced and both hips. So when they say go down with the bad or up with the bad and down with the good, like where's the good? I don't yeah. really yeah. have much of that oh, going on. So. Walk on your hands. Yeah, yeah there you go. So, <laughs> Gina's going to turn yeah. into an acrobat. <laughs> oh, soon, I hope. And um, have you made any other adaptions to the house to make it more comfortable for you right now and after surgery? Yes, I have an electric recliner that okay. goes up and down with a touch of a button. Nice. I have uh, handrails in the shower. Great. And I use a walker. Okay. Cane. I have a uh, foot. I have uh, a grabber that if I drop something, I use the grabber. Okay. So, because uh, you can't really bend at the waist, no, right? No, you can't bend at the waist. It pulls. It feels like the pulling sensation from your hip. Mm-hmm. Um, anything I have uh, my little station set up by my chair I have my grabber my remote box of Kleenex everything I would need my medicines my I have every my water everything is conveniently placed by my chair okay that's Gina good. can I ask do you have home services are you familiar with that program where you can actually have people come in and give you assistance that's what their job is to do? I have that, but I thought I was only going to get that after surgery. I didn't know you can get it prior. Depending on what your needs are, you may be eligible for that. And those folks, are their job is to come in and help you where you can't or the family is unable to assist you. Oh, I will have to look into that. Thanks. Yeah, that's great, Ron. That'll be a great resource for you. Great. Right. Yes, sure would. Well, I'm sure that you're really happy that your girls are off school for the summer. They've got to be a great help around the house. You know, that goes both ways because they are teenagers, oh. both girls, and yeah. they're not liking all the commands right now, sure. but they are a big help. And it's nice to have someone in the house when you're immobile or sure. in case something does happen. Sure. Um, they, they, they are a big help. You know, um, I'm glad that they're there. How much pain have you been in with with all this going on well it seems like i wake up at seven in pain um i take up i do take monitored pain medicine i would say in an average day my pain is about eight to ten hours of pain it's hard to sleep it's it's getting hard to even walk to the bathroom go to the bathroom brush my teeth, uh, stretching my arm above my head to brush my hair. It's hard because it just feels like everything is connected. It's pulling my at my bad hip. Mm-hmm. Everything is sore. Well, I, I know um, I did read online that people, one of the biggest or most common comments made about hip surgery is that people were amazed how quickly after the procedure they felt better and they were able to walk and it was more comfortable and everything. So yes. we're definitely looking forward to that. And seeing you back after that. Yes, right. I've heard that too, and I, I just can't wait for that. This and, kind of sounds like everything where the this bone is connected, connected yeah. to your yeah. yeah. hip bone. Yeah. Connected yeah. To yeah. Your yeah. bone. Yeah. If you have bad hips, then it'll throw your knees and your ankles off, sure. I mean, your hips are kind of, you know, when people are always talking about your core, I think your core and then your hips and everything. So, yeah. It's, it is, because I actually told, I told my orthopedic surgeon, I said, is this crazy, but my tailbone hurts. Mm-hmm. And he said, definitely, everything is connected. Your kneecap, it feels like it's extending, stretching outward, and you're just sitting down. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. The pain is insane. And a hip transplant is a big operation in my mind. But what we have learned when we were doing research on this is that nowadays it's so routine that there are folks that have it same day hip replacements. That's crazy. What? No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, the surgery is required because of um, arthritic degeneration uh, um, to the cartilage, so osteoarthritis. That in that cartilage normally cushions the head of the femur or thigh bone, where it fits into the socket, socket or pelvic bone. And the surgery actually entails removing the top of the femur and replacing it with a titanium spike and a ball head. So picture like a golf ball tee, but with a rounded head or a dressmaker's pin where it has that ball on the end. And then the spike end is inserted into the top of the femur after the old head is removed, and the new socket is then uh, fitted to match perfectly with that ball end. And they just put it onto onto your upper thigh, and then it's attached in the recessed area of the pelvic bone, creating a new home for the leg to swivel on. 
I mean, it's kind of amazing. A plastic liner is then placed between the two pieces, and now you have a whole new hip. It's like, you know, brand new. And it's only a four hour or less procedure. And uh, it's just, um, the pain will be gone before you know it. It's kind of amazing that they can do this and how they've worked everything out. Yes, I, um, before that detailed description, Jean, I was all excited <laughs> for this <laughs> operation, but now, no, I'm all jokes aside, I am really looking forward to this um, trans, or... It's a new transplant, yep. yeah. it is basically. Re, re, well, hip replacement, yes, right. I can't wait. Well, and I'm sure before you had your liver transplant, that sounded very daunting as well. It did, you know, and it's funny that you say that because I really didn't Google much about the liver transplant and I didn't really want to know much before going into it, okay. but. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> well, and also I think um, now because you've had the delay, you have more time to think about it. Yes, that's yeah. and exactly, and I am in mobile. Before I was mobile and now I just, I am Googling a lot more. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the folks out there, Gina does not <laughs> sit still for a second. No. I yeah. think our next podcast is going to be on her anxiety yeah. from waiting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? For the liver transplant, they, it was a, a whole healthcare team that supported you. You did go to see mental health was a big part of it because it is such a huge undertaking. And pharmacy and all the different components were there. Right. But I don't know if they have that same. And this is, I mean, it, it is maybe a same-day procedure for some, but it's still, it is a big procedure. Right. That is. But you are right about the liver transplant compared to this. I know we're not trying to compare these two, right. but yeah, it just seems like this, I have so much time on my hands and being in mobile, I am Googling a lot more and right. anticipating this. And when it did get postponed, oh, the devastation set in. I'm sorry. Well, I think that we're getting to the point in with medicine that we might have... Um, you know, like it might have been a three day or even a week late long stay, and now it's outpatient, for, you know, surgery for most. Um, I don't know if it's driven by insurance costs and they're trying to cut costs by keeping people in the hospital for shorter and shorter durations, or the desire to avoid complications like infections and such that you might uh, get while waiting in the hospital. But the trend is definitely for a quick in and out procedure and quick turnaround, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, I think insurance and insurance costs and premiums could be a whole podcast in and of itself these oh, days. Oh, yeah, it could be a whole show. Oh, like well, that whole, could be a whole, that yeah. could be a different podcast group. Yes. <laughs> We're not going to take them out. No. Um, we'll have to think about that. <laughs> but uh, but what's the story for your upcoming surgery, Gina? Are you going to be in and out? They said that I would be spending at least one night um, in the hospital after surgery due to my other medication or my medical conditions conditions so I'm happy about that though I don't really feel like going home the same day right and I'm glad that somebody will be monitoring me professionally in the hospital well that's good um then when you think you know you're coming home are you going to be all ready for your recovery period yes I um I took a mini class in the um, hospital and they taught me um Things that I have to extend my leg a certain way, otherwise it can become dislocated. Uh, they also teach it, they're going to teach me how to do stairs and how to walk and properly sit, stand from sitting. and How to get out of bed. How to get out of bed and how to put on clothes and actually relearn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But I just can't wait for that episode to happen. Sure. Well, we're going to have to do a follow-up after your surgery to see how things worked out and what you learned from going through it and give our listeners some inside information on what they can expect. That sounds like a great idea. Um, Would that be okay with you, Gina? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Well, then we could do an episode on uh, one or two of your knees, (laughs) you know, any other procedures. We'll just call it the Gina Show. (laughs) (laughs) Gosh. Because you're such a delightful guest. Thank you. Well, I think we have our work cut off for us just tracking your recovery from all these surgeries. Sincerely, we do wish you the very best in the next procedure this summer and can't wait to talk to you when it's all done. Yes, best of luck, Gina. And contact us when you're up and about for the follow-up interview. 
Yeah, Gina, I want to thank you on behalf of the Podcast DX staff and our listeners, and we appreciate you taking the time to sit with us because we know sitting is painful. (laughs) So we really do appreciate you taking the time today. And uh, we also want to thank our listeners out there. We have listeners now, a big group of you in L.A., so shout out to L.A., shout out to Ho Chi Minh City and Laos and London. Thank you, guys. And if you have any questions or comments related to today's show, you can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, our Facebook page, Pinterest, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a five-star review on iTunes podcast app. Until next time. Although this interview is being seamlessly melded into your before hip replacement interview, welcome back, Gina, from your hip replacement surgery. You're, well, you're sounding fabulous. I know you're looking fabulous because I saw you last week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks. It's good to be back. And yes, I am feeling fabulous. Well, Gina, how long ago did you get your new hip? When did you actually get it? September 10th, uh, just about a month ago. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And was the recovery what you really expected? Actually, recovery is better than what I expected. It's going really well. Um, I'm not having much pain, and I'm walking pretty good, but assisted walking, you know, with a walk break. Oh, okay, okay. And did they give you any restrictions for after surgery? Yeah, say, uh, they, they say just don't bend at the hip or waist. I don't want to jeopardize my new hip in any way. They say dislocation can happen. I don't want that. I need to use a uh, grabber. It's a long pole with a claw at the end. Mm-hmm. I have that at my station to okay. put my shoes on or pick anything up off the floor with it. I get dressed with it. It's very heavy. I didn't think I would use it, but I do every day. Hey, is it is it kind I, of fun? Um, is it kind of like you're playing a game? Yeah, <laughs> kind of, because like when the candy's on the kitchen table, I can grab the, <laughs> the uh, candy. I'm, I'm picturing, yeah, that, I'm picturing that game operation where you have to use the tweezers to pick yeah. things out, you know? Where I'm picturing yeah. the claw machine. Oh, yeah, at, the claw machine the at a machine. vending yeah. machine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you're kind of getting used to that. Yeah, All yeah. right. Yeah, on my real board days, I pick lint up with it on the floor. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> you learn as you go. So, okay. I um, there's also if you're a sock person, which I'm not, but they have a tool for that to put your socks on because remember, no bending. Okay. So, and also a long shoehorn is very helpful to put your shoes on. Okay. I got used to slip-on shoes, so I don't have to tie them up. That's yeah, good. So sure, mule, sure. Mules went, are all the all the rage this season. I hate mules, but anyway. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I was going to yeah. get her a pair of mules for <laughs> yeah. Christmas. I guess we got to change no, that idea. Mule, mules are not me. Okay. I looked at them the other day. No, no. Boy. <laughs> but I do like slip-ons. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got used to those. So um, another thing is, um, you need a pillow to sleep with between your legs because you can't have your legs cross over each other. Oh. You can't cross your feet at the ankles. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah. You, you know, it's it's crazy because I was doing that and the therapist caught me doing that. And I, it was out of habit, I guess. Right. So you have to be uh, real conscious of that. Okay. And also, um, you have to use a raised toilet seat with handles. Uh, to, it's easier to get up with the handles on the to- raised toilet right. seat. Um, the other, you know, once that was put on my toilet at the house, I have two teenage daughters. They didn't really appreciate <laughs> that. Because yeah, you're, that device. you're practically standing with, on the toilet now, right? Yeah. How how long do yeah. you have to use that? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm I'm a couple weeks out, so I'm thinking a couple more weeks okay. until I can. You know what? Just leave you know, it on there. To, you know. Just leave it on yeah. there and see what you they know, say. I got you yeah. <laughs> see what they say. Yeah. Right. You're right. So um, everything else is going as uh, planned. You know, I'm I uh, moving right along. Well, that's great. So I'm feeling great. But that's that's really yeah. a lot of um, 
a lot of things that you have to keep in the back of your mind as far as like the not bending and uh, not picking up anything off the floor. Did anybody, did anybody go over all of these things, you know, like um, the dangerous things before the surgery? Sure. I went through a pre-op at the hospital. It was about a three-hour pre-op um, evaluation. They, they go over everything with you, your do's and your don'ts. Okay. They, they visually, they, they, the nurses, they are showing you how to get up and how to sit. Okay. Don't bounce down on your chair and don't, you know, you have to stretch your operated leg out and get up from that position, which that takes a little bit of practice. Yeah, they go over a lot of things, um, but when you when you go through it, it comes second nature when you actually do it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Instead of just watching it, yeah. Right. Yeah, so they do go over your do's and don'ts at the hospital. Okay, and Gina, have you started uh, physical therapy yet? I did. Actually, they start you out the second, the day after surgery. Oh, I was wow. in the hospital, but they, yeah, they walk you. You have to walk down the hallway and you have to manage to do stairs before you leave, okay. before you're discharged. Right. Well, that makes sense. They want you to do right. certain things. Because I mean, yeah. when you go home, right. if you've got stairs to get in your house, yeah. what are you going to do? Just stand there and say, well, that's going to be on week two. Right. So I'll just be here waiting <laughs> right. until week two. <laughs> but that's amazing that right. you could do right. stairs it's, the day after surgery. Yeah. It was, yeah, it wasn't that bad, actually. It was, you know, I was scared, uh-huh. but I think... The thought of falling was the scary part. I, but they were right there with you, and um, it kind of wasn't that bad as I thought, good. you know. But I want to say before I forget, everybody, make sure when you get discharged, the nurse goes to the car with you and teaches you at that particular time how to get in the car because really nobody kind of showed oh, me. Oh, an important you know? factor. Yeah, sure, definitely. absolutely. Yeah. So let them walk you down to your car or whoever's car it right. is and have them show you correctly how to get in that car. Sure, okay. sure. And maybe make sure that your family pays attention at that time, too. Yeah. Like whoever your yeah. caregiver might right, be. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's a good a very piece of good advice. Point. Thank you. Yeah. Is it hard for you yeah. to get back and forth to physical therapy? Well, actually, right now, I have a therapist coming to my house three times a week. I um, And then... The physical therapist or the physical therapy place that I registered at has a mobile car that picks me up. Oh, nice. Yeah. And takes me. Yeah. So it's kind of convenient in that way. But I did go and drive my own car the other day and it wasn't bad. Wow. So, yeah, I am. And which, well, which leg, which leg did you have the uh, hip replaced? I had the right side. The right side. Okay. So that's your driving yep. leg, yeah, you're and just, uh, yeah. and you're able to yeah. drive. That's great. That After that's a month, that's yep. great. Well, with all of these amazing things related to the surgery, has there been any downside with the recovery? Is there anything um, that's been difficult with the recovery, or with your recovery? You know, I I feel amazing, and it's just a, um, I can't walk without the walker yet, sure. and I. I'm in no pain. I don't feel any more slipping of the hip. I just don't feel like I can take that first step without the walker. Oh. And that's the only thing that I'm battling right now. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And is there any, is there like pain where they did the surgery? Because I know that I think, they, don't they have to cut the gluteus maximus when they do I it? Because you did it from the, the rear, so. right? I don't know. We'd have to look. Right. I don't the think they. Posterior. I don't think they just posterior. moved the. I we would have to look. We'll have to look it up. Before. But you know, like, is there a is right. there a lot of surgical pain? Actually, I was amazed, but I have to say no. In the beginning, it almost felt like a heavy leg feeling, where I couldn't, I couldn't move my leg okay. or my leg. Okay. As time went on, that went away. And it's just now a weakness type where I can't feel, I, I don't feel like my body can walk without the walker. Like I feel like I might fall down. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Like a week, like a week. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what's been the best part of your recovery? Oh, wow. The um, feeling, every time I had stood, anything I did, my hip would, 
you know, slip out of socket. So thank God that's gone. That was absolutely the worst feeling in the world to me. Sure. Um, that, and that's gone. So oh. I'm thankful for that. Okay. And I, I remember they said that it was like bone on bone and grinding. Yeah, with the osteoarthritis. Right. Yes. So that's, so that's was, all gone no, too then. That, that's all gone. Yep. Thank God. Yep. Wow. Everything is going fine with that. Did they put a, they put a, well, you know, like when we work on trucks, it's called a grease zert. Do they put it like a, a fitting in your hip that you could oil it every so often? I don't think so, Mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. All right. I, I, I'll have to ask. Although, although Gina might be a, a well-run machine yes, or a well-running yes, machine. Yes, yes, right. Um, yeah, there's, I don't think there's any inputs yeah. for grease. Okay, all right. Wow. But, yeah. <laughs> sorry. What is, uh, what's next on your surgery escapades? Oh, well, I do need my left hip re- or my left knee replaced. Okay. However, I did talk it over with the surgeon, and they said it's basically up to my discretion when I want that done. I have been going through so much the past year. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hold off till like the end of 2019 for that. I just want to give my body a little break from surgery and hospitals and doctors. So we'll see how it goes. If I could handle it, I think the end of 2019 sounds good to me. Okay. So. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. And uh, and what? Okay. So 2019. That's when and you're so gonna, like. That's when you're going to you have, have it right. around September, October. Then you'll have your liver, your hip, and your knee <laughs> anniversaries all at the same time. Yes. I'll have one big cake. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Okay, uh, it certainly sounds like you're working at getting everything back to normal. Would you say that your goal is to dance at your daughter's graduation next summer? Oh gosh, I'm going to hope for backflips at that awesome. graduation oh, party. Backflips. <laughs> now, now we know what the next surgery is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Gina, do you have any other suggestions for our listeners who might be going through hip surgery soon or another joint replacement procedure? Sure. I would suggest stocking your freezer up with food. Get your ice bags ready. Um, Set up a station where you sit and comfortable. Get everything you need. Um, You have to elevate your legs. Get your station ready, meaning have your medicine handy, your remote control, your phone chargers, your iPad computer, whatever you use, books, magazines, brush, wipes, you know, set up your station because you're going to be living there, sleeping there. You're going to be doing a lot so there. You're so kinda stuck at, you're kind of stuck you need, in that reclining chair for a week or so? And the, Well, the first couple of days is rough. You know, you don't even want to go to the bathroom because you don't want to make that walk. Okay. So really... Kind of have your station set up where you're going to get dressed, you're going to, you know, wash up, <laughs> things like that. I know it sounds crazy, but well, you, no, not really, you're going to get it once you have I mean, you're, yeah. you're just recovering from a major surgery. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that all makes right. sense. And uh, you, you said that you were using ice bags um, for the pain in the beginning? Yes, I, I'm still, I still am. Oh, okay. I don't have any pain, but I still use the ice just for any inflammation. Oh, yeah, swelling, I, right, right. Yeah, so I, I still ice it up, I elevate. I Well, I'm doing a lot more walking these days, so at the end of the day, I still use the ice. Oh, sure, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I yeah. know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Jean yesterday, you know, like, I'm doing okay during the day, but then by the end of the day, oh, that's it, my yeah. lower back is fried. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I right. just don't want to move. Yeah. I understand. Sure, yeah. Well, Gina, yeah. thank you once again for joining us. And like I said, we're going to add this section on to the before surgery where we were discussing it. Uh, but I'm glad that you got through it. And I understand that uh, you also have a milestone for your hip transplant recently. Is that a milestone for your liver transplant? Oh no, for your liver transplant. That's right. Yeah, her her one for the one year. Yeah, we had yes. one year liver birthday, right? Yes, I did. I was uh, September twenty ninth or September thirtieth, actually. Okay. Yes, it was. Uh, so just one a year. week ago, <laughs> a, a year old that liver Aww. is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very good. Yes. Did you give it a, a birthday party and a birthday cake? We sure did. Yes, I had. I actually had chocolate cake. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and, I love um, it. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Oh. Well, Gina. Life is going great. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. And yeah, you are quite a yes. survivor, always pulling through and with a smile on your face. And I'm glad I am. <laughs> and I'm thrilled that you're doing so well after everything you've been through. And I guess we'll be talking with you again next year. After the knee. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Well Yeah, you sure will. You just right. keep keep Thank those you. uh hips oiled. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I will. All right. All right. Have Take a good care, one. Gita. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. All right, bye-bye. thanks guys.